programs in women's lacrosse, two Big Ten Conference rivals ready to clash again as the top two ranked teams in the country. Number one Northwestern in town to visit second ranked Maryland in front of a sold out crowd in College Park, ready to see this showdown. And we've got your ticket for you at home here on Big Ten Network. Hi there, Jason Knapp here. So glad to have you with us alongside three-time Tawaratan Award winner as the nation's top college lacrosse player, two-time national champ of the Terps, Taylor Cummings. And you understand what this rivalry is about. 20 of the last 28 national titles between these two programs, and here they are, one and two in the nation again. When you think college women's lacrosse, you think Northwestern, you think Maryland. 20 of the last 28. That just is a testament to how talented these programs are, how talented they have been, and what we're going to see today on the field. What a schematic showdown in this game when you look at the high-powered, vaunted attack of Northwestern against this stingy Maryland defense. This is going to be the battle within the game. Northwestern's offense against Maryland's defense that is so highly ranked. Izzy Skane has been on fire this season. Maryland plays a really stout defense. It'll be a showdown between the two. Skane has had another incredible year coming off of the 2023 Tawarton Award. She's smart, she's fast, and she can put the ball in the back of the net. And for Maryland, Megan Ball last year when she played at Rutgers, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, comes over as a grad transfer, and she has been critical to the Terp success. This is a matchup I expect to see in this game. Ball against Skane. She's an incredibly strong defender, loves to check, can create havoc on the defensive end. If the Terps are going to pull the upset of number one, she needs to have a big day. Two experienced big game goaltenders here in this battle. Molly LaLiberty, part of Northwestern's national title team a year ago. You look at her numbers here in 2024. And Emily Sterling has been sensational again for Kathy Reese and the Terrapins here in her final campaign at College Park. That save percentage, about 56% percent the goals against average robust as well in front of this Terps defense ready to get rolling players hitting the as we get set for this showdown for the Terps it's actually their second straight one versus two showdown Kathy Reese and the Terps were number one of the country last week they lost midweek against Penn but rebounded with a road win at number two Michigan and now they're in the two spot in the rankings. And for Kelly Amonti, Hiller and company and the defending national champion Wildcats, well, they had a loss a little while back against Penn State, but rebounded with a road win at North Carolina. A win last weekend against Rutgers. And they take over the number one ranking. Here we go again. Northwestern and Maryland, one versus two in the nation. And we're underway. The opening draw, Shadid Ahern battling there against the Terps and Sam Smith and controlled here for Maryland in the whites at home. It's the dark uniforms for Northwestern here on the road. In front, La Liberty scooting behind. And let's see about the whistle. That's gonna be a hold on Northwestern. Eloise Clevenger was cutting through, trying to cre create space behind the crease ended up just getting tangled up with that Northwestern defender. Looks to be number 44, Gillespie for Northwestern, and Eloise Clevenger lines up for the first eight meter of the game. Free position attempt here for the Terps. And call here going against Maryland. That was a false start on Eloise Clevenger. Just got a little too excited and took a step before the whistle blew. Turnover that Maryland can't have in such a critical game for this season. All the little things will matter in a matchup of this magnitude as you look at the clear here for Northwestern. Jane Hansen, so adept in that category, helps escort it up the field. This Northwestern attack, again, ringing up goals galore with what they can do on the offensive end. There's Izzy Skane, led the nation in goals herself last year with 99. Northwestern tops in the nation again, top five again this season. Off the scramble, controlled there by Lindsey Frank, the grad student transfer from Richmond. 
Great first save from Emily Sterling. Unfortunately, ball hit the turf and was not picked up by Maryland. Well, there is a goal to get things going. Sam Smith able to bury at her ninth of the year and the Wildcats with the early advantage. Solid first shot there from Sam Smith. She's a player that Coach Amante Hiller described as sort of an unsung hero, often gets overshadowed by her top attacking teammates. This was just a great little stutter step, face dodge, kept her shoulders downhill to cage, low and away. With this sun in Emily Sterling's face right now, that's a really difficult stop for her to make. Now you've played on this field a lot, and here with the start time, you look at what she's looking at. Yeah, it is really difficult to see. Ironically, the coin flip to start and to figure out who's on that side at the beginning of the game is often crucial in moments like this. Well, it favors Northwestern here at this point. Again, forcing the Terps goalie to look into the sun. Smith with her ninth of the year. She had 30 goals last year, including two for Maryland in the Big Ten final. And off the draw, another whistle. This one belongs to the Terps. Again, Terps lead the all-time series history, 18-12. Pats have won six of the last eight against Maryland. Before that, it was a run of nine straight wins for the Terps over Northwestern. Two meetings last year, both went in favor of the Wildcats, 13-6 in the regular season. And Evanston, 14-9 for Northwestern in the Big Ten final. So now a green card here as well. So you see, sitting for a moment, on the penalty and the player advantage here for the Terps. This is going to be sort of that first settled offensive possession for the Terps and their player up right now. I expect everyone to get a touch and for them to go through their set and get this defense moving. In Maryland, averaging about 12 and a half goals per game, but held in single digits the last two outings. And the whistle and the call. So Hannah Lubecker, leading goal getter on this team. That looked to be with Mahoney playing without her goggles on, which is why that foul was called. And again, goggles so prominent in the safety of this game. Pass whipped around. Entry, side, shot to score. Coming from behind and able to bury it is Chrissy Thomas, the senior from Riverhead, New York, and it's one all. Really great poise there from Chrissy Thomas. Maryland doing a really nice job on that player up opportunity, just moving the ball. Northwestern zone defense right now with the player down is shifting, they're engaging, and by quick using quick ball movement, they're able to really expose a hole right on the crease for Chrissy Thomas. And patience displayed by Maryland. And Thomas coming from behind, in front, to the back of the net. Five goals now in the year for Thomas. And Maryland able to square the score at one apiece. And again, shooting, Taylor, going to be such a key thing to track here for Maryland. Again, Kathy Reese has talked about it. She knows kind of the key to success for her team, and it's being efficient in shots. Draws certainly matter, too, but this team early in the year had trouble putting the ball in the back of the net. There were some games, I remember the Drexel game, where they had 41 shots, I believe. In their most recent games, they've had 18 to 20 shots, but they've been more efficient as of late. So it's just a, it's a battle and a balance between generating a lot of shots, but making sure they're good ones that are on cage. Kelly Monte Hiller intimated to us, hey, we both know draws are so vital. Well, all three have gone to the Terps thus far. Shaylin Ahern's done a really great job directing the ball to where she wants it to go. And Libby that's a May great move. And able to <laughs> line, fire, and score. No goals, no shots for her against Michigan last weekend but she keeps her point streak rolling 62 straight games with a point as she adds another goal to her tally. That's a great individual take from Libby May. I'm really impressed so far with just the few Maryland possessions they've had of how Maryland attackers are going at this zone defense. At the defense, they're making them work. That's a great split dodge. Nice little roll, gets her hands free, and then low and through low Liberty stick. Sorry, legs. 
either way, finding the back <laughs> of the net. And again, we mentioned Maryland Taylor trying to find more shots, averaging 30 a game, but limited again against two of the other top defenses in the country in Penn and Michigan to just about 20 shots per game. Well, when you know that the Penn and Michigan teams are one, two, or three, somewhere in that mix for scoring defenses, their lower shot total makes sense but they've got to be efficient in those shots. And in that pen game, they weren't, unfortunately. So control here for Northwestern. And that loss for the Terps, their second of the season against one earlier against Florida. Northwestern had an early stumble too against the talented Notre Dame team. One seven in a row before that loss at Penn State. Again, in overtime, Kelly Amati Hiller talking about that game and bouncing back from it. She said there were kind of so many things that were below our level of standard, but we learned a lot from it. And they certainly did when after losing on a Friday, they came back to win on a Monday at North Carolina. Double team in there from the Terps defense and a whistle. That's a tough call right there. Um, I I would have been probably convinced to give a charge. She's going into no space. However, Brianna Lamoureux, number four, did kind of get into her spear a little bit. It's a tough call, depends on the angle, but now we're putting Ma Madison Taylor on the eight meter center hash with Emily Sterling looking in the sun. This is gonna be probably a good opportunity for Taylor. And there is the goal. Madison Taylor able to score it 20. Free position goals now for her on the year individually, and 45 for Northwestern as a team. Taylor, it's a critical way that the Wildcats can beat you from the eight meter. The Wildcats are so talented offensively that a lot of teams, the only way they can stop them is to foul them, to put them on the eight meter. So that's an area of the game that they have to be really, really efficient in, and they have proven to be this entire season. Able to score close to 50% of their free position shots. Madison Taylor among the best finishers overall and from the eight this year. It's her 45th tally on the season. And the Wildcats have more goals free position wise, free position wise than Maryland does shot attempts from the free position this year. 45th free position goal of the year for Northwestern. Maryland's only got 44 shots from the eight. Again, that just proves how efficient they are off the eight meter. That's something that they clearly practice. They clearly want to emphasize, and they've done a really good job of making those opportunities count. Northwestern, Skein, knifing in. Bounce shot to score. Both of these teams lighting it up at the outset. And again, Second most goals in NCAA history, Izzy Skane, who had 99 last year, gets her 54th of the campaign, and it's 3-2. This year's Tawartan Award frontrunner is just having another spectacular season. Here you can see Skane is isolated. They run sort of a little, little slip pick, nothing fancy. All Skane has to do is quick little split dodge, brings it back into her right hand, shoots low and away. All three Northwestern goals have been low, either bouncers or right sort of on that goal line extended in the crease. Just makes it really difficult for Emily Sterling to make a save. Now you see the active goal leader, Izzy Skane, chasing the great Charlotte North from Boston College. And that all-time goals record certainly in the sights of Izzy Skane with her average of over a hat trick per game. And see a stick up there. And the whistle call coming against Northwestern. Control here from Bree Lamoureux. And the Terps ready to roll up. Northwestern retaking the lead after goals 28 seconds apart. Turnover Terps. That's a great ride there from Izzy Skane. Something, a part of her game that's not always talked about, especially this year with the new green card rules that make it difficult to ride between the 30s. Great composed, poised ride there. Nice time check. And she's able to get another possession for Northwestern. Meredith Frank, touch behind for Madison Taylor. Back to Frank, played field hockey, and lacrosse at Richmond. 
Opportunity there from goal line extended, but sent back out high. Skeen pushed away by ball. Flip over for Taylor, looking for space, and that one parried aside by Emily Sterling. Great Emerson. save there, great ball movement. Yeah, Emerson Bowling, excuse me, coming over to collect. Skeen again. How about the rebound tally there for Skeen, but as she was called for in the crease. That was a close call. I would love to see a replay there. Great save there from Emily Sterling on that initial dodge. But again, another great opportunity created by Skane just to keep her, keep in it. She gets a stick on it, gets a goal, but unfortunately stepped into the crease. So Maryland able to come back and try to set up shop offensively. Speed behind. And there's Thomas who's got one of the tallies thus far. And both these teams dealt with injuries recently. Sammy White, Harley Mahoney, two members of the Northwestern D have missed time this year. Corey Edmondson, who's got it, been dealing with an injury, but she looks rock solid there, flashing in for the shot and the score. And it's 3 all. That's a dodge I've seen many times. She's one of my former McDonough players, playing for the Terps now. And just a nice, easy little dodge. Great save there to kickstart this play, though, from Emily Sterling. And then again, just gets a stick on it, helped with Megan Ball, or Corey Edmondson, excuse me, getting a stick on that shot. And then Corey Edmondson does it on the other end. Quick little face dodge down this right alley and shoots low opposite corner. That's an excellent shot placement. We're tied 3-3. Again, the goal's coming in a flurry. And we talked about Maryland and they're shooting woes at times this year. Three goals on three shots, that's got to please Kathy Reese a ton. 100%, that's really all you could ask for. And especially in a game like this, getting your first couple of shots on cage and in the back of the net helps build confidence, kind of settles everybody in, and helps build some positive momentum for this really long game. How about this? Here in this opening stanza, already three ties and a lead change between these two elite programs. And Taylor, here's what we're talking about shooting number-wise. Maryland's the second-ranked team in the country, but they're 80th best in the nation at shooting percentage, just 40% efficiency. That is pretty surprising when you look at those numbers. That was a stat I was surprised to see in our run-through. But again, it shows it's a testament. The fact that they are number two in the country, it's a testament to how hard their defense plays, how well Emily Sterling's playing in cage, how the, how the offense is making the most of most of their opportunities. It's an area that the Maryland Terrapins are going to want to clean up as they get into tournament time. And again, an electric start hitting on all three shots so far. And in their win against Michigan last week, they hit on five straight shots in a game. They only had 19 shots in the third and fourth quarters, and it was a big reason they were able to come from behind and take down previously unbeaten Northwestern. There's a big save. Sterling had it tracked all the way. Sterling read that really well, but credit Brianna Lamoureux, number four for Maryland. That was excellent one-on-one -on -one defense against Madison Taylor, a player who is in Tawarton Award contention conversations. She's played an incredible sophomore season thus far. That was great one-on-one -on -one individual effort from her. So Sterling rising to the occasion here early. And Maryland working it down to the offensive end, looking to retake the lead. Thomas coming in front. Pushed away there by Kendall Halper. Run there from Hannah Lubecker, who buries it. Terps on top. Again, this offensive possession and a successful one at that starts with a save from Emily Sterling. She's reading the ball well, now kind of getting settled into that sun, able to kind of get the shots that she wants to see given those elements. And then with the successful clear comes a Hannah Lubecker goal. Who else? She loves to dodge. That's sort of her bread and butter. Nice little face dodge here. Uses that pick right down the middle of the cage. Low and away. So Hannah Lubecker, who's got speed and size galore here to flash through defenses, makes it four goals on four shots. And the Terps retake the lead. 
35 now in the season for Lubecker. And team high, and she herself shoots close to 50% of the year. She's had a great year. She's a very veteran player for Maryland, loves to dodge, has no fear when going to cage hard, and is taking advantage of this man-to-man -man scheme that Northwestern has thrown at the Terps thus far. So possession here for Northwestern on the road, trying to do something that no one's ever done, and that has beat a Kathy Reese coach team in a conference game here in College Park. She's never lost one in 18 years as the leader of this program. Remarkable. Whenever I see a stat about Kathy's record and her home record and her overall wins, it's just truly impressive. She is one of a kind as a coach. I am a little biased just given that I played for her, but she really does have success here. Now Northwestern continuing to attack and the relentless Madison Taylor gets her second and knots us again at four apiece. Strong, strong lefty dodge here for Madison Taylor. Puts it in the back of the net after a quick little face dodge. We're all tied up 4-4. Four, four. Women's Lacrosse in the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Kathy Reese and the Terrapins winning the national crown for the last time back in 2019. And the Wildcats of Northwestern reigning supreme a season ago, capturing the title there in Cary, North Carolina. And these two programs combined have won 20 of the last 28 national titles. Both certainly a threat to do it again here this year. And we are off and rolling. You want a good competitive game between one versus two? How about four ties, three lead changes there in the opening 10 minutes of play? I mean, if you're a lacrosse fan, you could ask for nothing more, whether you're watching on TV or one of the 24, 2,500 people in the stands right now. This is as entertaining as women's lacrosse gets. Yeah, a tough ticket to get here and going to be a new crowd record sold out here with more fans than they've ever packed into the field hockey lacrosse complex. Turnover there, Maryland. And that's something to track, too. The Terps in their loss against Penn. 18 turnovers in that game. And one of the reasons the shot total was down, you can ill afford to have a lot less possessions than Northwestern with the way the Cats can pile in the goals. And already four here for Maryland. Definitely, and if you're going to turn over the ball, you want it to be like with purpose. You want it to be off of a feed that's going to cage or a char like a charge because you're going hard to goal, not just a missed pass while you're passing around trying to get everybody settled. And Northwestern turning it back over. Here's the clear for Megan Ball. And a foul coming on Madison Taylor. Again, Megan Ball missed the loss against Penn. She tried to play through a stomach bug, a bug, what was ineffective, and Kathy Reese opting to sit her. Then she came back against Michigan. All she did last week in that win against the Wolverines was seven draw controls, five ground balls, and two cost turnovers. And now on the offensive end, offensive foul there against Merrill. That's a charge against Chrissy Thomas. She tried to split two defenders, and Northwestern did a really nice job of getting their feet set, closing that gap, and creating this opportunity. So well done by the Wildcats. That's two turnovers kind of back-to-back -back for both teams. I think they both need to kind of get settled, get everybody a touch. It's been a really fast-paced first quarter. It certainly has. Northwestern back at it. Emily Sterling with her back turn for the moment. Now comes back with the ball in front of the net. Skeen trying to get a step on ball. Double team coming out, passes it up. Shot wide of the cage. Not sure if Sterling had a piece on that on the way by. I think she got a little bit of a tip. Izzy Skeen doing a nice job. Maryland sending that early slide whenever she gets an isolation on that elbow. She kept her head up, found a streaking Northwestern cutter on the inside, but another great save by Sterling before that one slipped by her. And how about that? Koikendall with a gorgeous feed. Skeen able to bury it. Izzy gets her second of the game, and the Cats retake the top spot, 5-4. 
only took around 12 minutes or so for the dynamic duo to link up. Skane is known for being a dodger, but I don't think enough people talk about her cutting ability. She really has a soft touch. She can cut and then finish under pressure. Excellent feed there from Erin Koykendall. That's her specialty, her bread and butter, sort of feeding from behind that cage. It's a second of game for Skane, 55 now in the season. And it's another assist for Koykendall, 34 on the campaign for the Division I career active assist leader. Hundred and seventy-four helpers now in Koykendall's career. Coming off a four-point outing, two goals, two assists. Last time out for the grad student from Spencerport, New York, for the Wildcats. Five for Northwestern. And the draw controlled by Shannon Smith for the moment. And let's see about the foul call. And this will belong to the Turks. Great job there from Shannon Smith of Maryland, just keeping her feet moving. Northwestern was hunting her down, waiting for her to cross that restraining line so they can get a little more pressure on her, but she kept her feet moving and avoided the foul, or avoided, sorry, the turnover. Uh, Halpern stepping up behind, able to take it away from Lubecker, and now Northwestern looking to clear. Coming near side for Sammy White, and great to see her healthy. Back here in her home neck of the woods from Timonia, Maryland, missed five games with a leg injury for Northwestern, but back at it, critical part of the Cats defensive unit. Frank over for Koykendall directing traffic. Defense stepping up, low shot, deflected in front. And the whistle out high, it's gonna be a yellow card coming here against Northwestern, was that a legal follow through on the shot? Yes, the referee signaled a dangerous follow through. Frank tried to get her hands free, ended up clipping number 25 for Maryland, Sophie Hollis, right on the hip. It wasn't hard, it wasn't intentional, but with the only equipment that women's lacrosse players wear being goggles, any contact with the body is gonna be a yellow card. So now player up our opportunity here for Maryland for two minutes after the foul against Lindsey Frank. And now we'll see what the Terps can do on this extra player opportunity to try to tie us yet again. The last few Maryland possessions have been a little rushed. They've had a few turnovers. This is one where they need to get everyone a touch and get a quality look on cage and take the most of this opportunity. Lubecker, extra pass to the side, in front. Stop made by La Liberty, denying Maisie Clevenger. Critical time for the first save of the game for the I, Northwestern goalie. I think that's gonna be one that Maisie Clevenger wants back. La Liberty is a lefty, but she hugged that right pipe really well. And again, with Maryland being a player up, there was probably a more open opportunity in the future for the Terps. Sammy White with a self-clear there for the Terps, taking it herself, but have a ball dispossessing her in the back. If there's one skill that I attribute to Megan Ball more than anything else, it's checking, and that was just a fantastic back check right there. And a great ride from Maryland to create a turnover that may result in another turnover. Nope, picked up right there by Eloise Clevenger. A little sloppy there. Terps have numbers in transition. Smith gets the deck after the collision in deep. And this may lead to a free position opportunity. Yes, this, was, this is going to be a free position opportunity for Maryland. Number 21, Madison Smith for Northwestern. Just catching Smith, Shannon Smith of Maryland, a little bit too high, on, and now she's on the eight meter. Again, 30 seconds left in the player up scenario. And we've got a green card as well, let's see. So straight away here for Smith, you taking the shot or are you holding for possession? The Terps are 7v5 right now on the offensive end. I was Maryland, I would pull it out and work for an open shot. You now have 30 seconds, two players up. Another, another 30 seconds, one player up. I would really try to own this, but there's only 14 seconds left. So I can see Shannon Smith taking this in. So the green card on Gillespie, she needs to sit for a minute. And the Terps 
free position wise, they finish less than 30% of the time on these shots, but Smith is straight away and she does pull it out. They will start the second quarter with the ball. So that's a smart decision to make, just given the timing that we had left in this quarter. And again, if Maryland holds on to the ball here at the end of the quarter on the player up, they'll start with it in that scenario coming up in the second quarter. And what a beginning. One versus two, living up to the hype so far. Northwestern by one over Maryland. Well, women's lacrosse next Saturday. Stream it live on Big Ten Plus when the Terps are back in action on the field here in College Park against Penn State and the Wildcats host Ohio State. There's no plus like home. Download Big Ten Plus and subscribe right now. In front of a sold out crowd here at College Park, Jason Knapp, Taylor Cummings, and you here on Big Ten Network. Look at the numbers here from this explosion of activity between these two teams. Northwestern has been fueled by the play of Skane and Taylor. They've done a really nice job placing their shots on Emily Sterling of Maryland. Maryland has scored on four or five of their shots. A lot of these stats when we're looking at this first quarter, very even. In four ties, four lead changes in the opening quarter. Every other goal than the first of the game resulted in a tie or a lead change. And we would like more of the same here to witness between these two teams coming up. Kathy Reese and her squad, again, never lost to a conference foe here at home. And they're 171 and eight all time under Coach Reese here in College Park. That's a 95 and a half percent win rate here Four, at home. Three, Northwestern's two, only win in the one, series coming back here in College Park. The last time they won was 2006. Again, when the two were not conference rivals. And that was the last year of Cindy Timschel and her terrific career here at leading the Terrapin program. So they'll get it back into the stick here of Maggie Weissman. One of the players who could see some more time tonight. Victoria Hench not dressed for the Terps tonight, dealing with an injury. There's Weissman who's been able to score a little bit more of late. And the Terps there with the penalty winding down, not able to get anything rolling. That's gonna be a frustrating possession for Coach Reese and staff. You are one player up for 30 seconds, two players up for 30 seconds, and all that resulted was a turnover. That's gonna be one that they want back because that could be a very critical moment in this game so early on. We touched on the shooting percentage and how it's been Spot on for Maryland so far, but seven turnovers are not good from a Terps perspective. And Northwestern ready to set up the attack again. And again, Skeen holding it, defended by Sophie Hallis. Shot to score. Got it by Sterling. Skeen with a first half hat trick, and it's 6 4. Skane loves this left elbow, left alley dodge, and she's comfortable keeping it in her right hand, keeping it in the, in the side closest to her defender. But what she does really nicely is protect her stick, and then she, by having her stick on that inside, actually creates more of an angle, more of a shooting angle. Emily Sterling clipped this, I believe, so it didn't get cleanly past her, but nonetheless, it went in. We're now 6-4 Northwestern. Just off the side of the stick and in, Skane now 56 on the season. She scored three of the last four goals for Northwestern. And again, you look at what she and Madison Taylor have done this year, you're looking at close to 50% of the finishing for this Northwestern team. Having two players commit, you know, and, and get almost 50% of your goals in is outrageous. It just shows the talent that they have, especially when they're number one in the country, and they have so many talented players on their roster. Well, the Terps trying to attack off the draw win. Lost. May almost had it back. And now the Cats able to control. Strong work for Northwestern, and now in transition. Bolvig bringing it up. That's going to be a foul on Megan Ball. 
Madison Taylor trying to pull across her body, dip underneath Megan Ball. Megan Ball got a little bit too close to the spear there and right into her face. Going for that check, just a little bit too close into the body there. Northwestern 101 on free positions. And Sterling transition here. Another false start yeah. on the free position. I'm curious if this environment is kind of impacting the players on the eight meter. With it being so loud, 2,500 people in the stands, it can be hard to hear the whistle and you're trying to anticipate it. So it wouldn't shock me if that's a contributing factor. Well, how about Lubecker roaming down and ringing one off the crossbar? Terps able to get it back here. Again, trying to answer this two goal run individually from Izzy Skein that's pushed Northwestern back in front. Northwestern's now in their backer zone. They switched out of their play, their man to man scheme. And that's something that Coach Monte Hiller talked a lot about in our conversation with her. They're comfortable switching from man to zone to high backer to high pressure backer to a little bit low pressure zone. And that just keeps teams on their toes, and they've done so with this Maryland team thus far. Kathy Reese talking about attacking hard and creating space against that zone to try to find the openings. What's that look like for the Terps? Well, because Northwestern is in a backer, you have to engage the backer, which means you have to dodge the on-person ball, the player on ball, engage the backer, and then move it twice. Find those openings on the backside. This is a, not a zone where you can just pass around and find openings. They have to attack, and they've done a nice job so far. Haley Russo trying to twist out of traffic. Good pressure there from Jane Hansen for Northwestern. Russo Jr. from Mantua, New Jersey at a Clearview High School. And the restart here for the Terps. Short time of the shot clock, just five seconds remaining. Bring it in front. Evanson, who's got a rocket shot, can't get it. And it's deflected, left in the crease for La Liberty. And she'll start the transition. Sammy White cruising up the field. Outlet for Sam Smith. And Northwestern holding strong again, bidding to give us a potential three goal lead. Again, right now up two. It's a large, large advantage for either team in this game. Northwestern's creating a massive isolation for Izzy Skein, giving her that elbow. Great health defense there, though, by Maryland. Izzy Skein does look to be down on the turf right now, though. Hopefully, she's okay. Yeah, slow to get up after that contact with Megan Ball. Again, two elite players in the college game going toe to toe. Taylor has it back outside, near the eight. Pushed away, and a foul coming against Maddie Sterling. Here we see Skane embracing the contact. Good help slide. It looks like her feet may have gotten tangled with Megan Ball or Shannon Smith. She's up now, though, so that's good news for the Northwestern Wildcats. And yeah, now Skane with the catch, but the foul before that. And they'll set up from an acute angle here on the restart for the Cats. Poikendall roaming in. Kept it going, saved there by Sterling. Skeen, another shot, another stop by Sterling. Out behind the crease, trying to just roll it out of harm's way, but it's Skeen who gets it back for the Cats. Frenetic action. And now Frank able to come free and earn the shooting space goal. What a series right there. Emily Sterling standing on her head. Love that creative little shot from Aaron Quakendall. Even better save, second save. Goes out to cre create the ground ball, and then unfortunately sees an eight meter that goes in the back of the net. Northwestern with all that pressure finally cashing in, Lindsey Frank able to score it, her 18th of the year, and the Northwestern lead advanced to three. I, I've been really impressed with the grittiness of this Northwestern team, resulting in an eight meter for Frank, and that's just wonderful placement. She takes that right alley, Gets Sterling to move a little bit off of her line, a little closer to that left pipe, and then sticks it to that right side. 
So Frank, two-sport transfer in from Richmond, able to score it. That's four straight goals for Northwestern. Maryland now without a goal for about a 12-minute stretch. And again, it's got to be frustrating for the Terps, Taylor. You've dominated here in draw controls. It's been 8-3 before this draw. And yet you're down three. And this one gonna belong to the Terps too. Maryland is down because of the turnovers. They've had the possessions, they're winning the draw. They just have to value the ball. And when they've made quality possessions, when they've gotten everybody working, they've gotten good shots on cage, they've been four for seven. They just have to get more. And in order to get more, you have to keep, you have to keep the ball. Eight turnovers, painful thus far for the Terps in that category. Trying to end this scoring drought. Lubecker, such a terrific Dodger. Badgered out high. Little bobble there for Shannon Smith. Retreats for Lubeck. Smith advances for Edmondson. Flip for Thomas behind. Maddie Smith there defending. And control for the Liberty after the deflection. Difficult to tell if that was a shot by Chrissy Thomas or she was attempting to feed it behind for Eloise Clevenger. Either way, Northwestern has done a really nice job of getting on Maryland attackers' hands. They've disrupted passes, they've closed gaps quickly with excellent footwork, and they're really kind of rushing this Maryland offense at the moment. Turnover nine on the Terps. Northwestern perfect in the clear game, 10 for 10. Two failed clears among the issues for Maryland in this game. And Koikendall trying to keep this goal string running. Low bouncer. Sterling watches that ricochet away. The chase on the end line for it. And it's going to belong to Northwestern. I love the hustle there from Izzy Skane. People talk about Izzy Skane's offensive prowess, but it really is fun to watch her ride. And there we see just that deflection, that quick crashing defense that Northwestern has. Madison Smith doing an excellent job getting on Chrissy, Smith, Chrissy Thomas's stick that last Maryland possession. Again, the Northwestern defense maybe doesn't get as much credit as it should at times. Again, top 35 in scoring defense because the offense just generates so many extra possessions with all the scoring it does, close to 18 goals per game. The extra possessions, their prowess at the draw circle, their defense sometimes doesn't see a lot of action in games. So they've done a really nice job thus far in a game that uh, up until recently was you know back and forth. They've done a really great job of just showing what they're all about and what the heart of this, Mar of this Northwestern defense really is. And yet another throw away from the Terps. Double digits now in the turnover category against just the four goals. Northwestern setting up shop again in the offensive end. We're gonna make this a five goal run. Taylor cuts by Lamoureux. Lost possession, let's see about the whistle. And a free position coming up again for the Cats. Madison Taylor is pretty slippery, so she's able to create a lot out of a little. Does a really nice job protecting her stick there. Maryland had the slide there, but they didn't use their feet. They went for the stick instead. I think there's an opportunity if you're Maryland to take a charge on Madison Taylor, just given the tight windows she tends to dodge in. Taylor again on free position, denied. Sterling sliding over for her ninth save here in the opening half. That's a big save. That, that could keep this game from being a four goal deficit to potentially a two goal deficit. So a big two goal swing potentially for Emily Sterling. Madison Taylor has success off the eight meter, but she reads that one really well. Madison Taylor has shot low a lot this game. And so maybe Emily Sterling is kind of scouting that a little bit as well. Season high 14 saves for Emily Sterling against James Madison earlier this year. One of the payback games of the Terps after losing twice the JMU last year, including the one that knocked them 
from the NCAA tournament second round. Thomas. Maddie Smith chasing her behind the cage. You can see how extended this, this Northwestern defense is. That means that Maryland has to dodge them in order to, to gain access to that space behind that initial defender. Now, Carly Mahoney called for the block, trying to track Hannah Lubecker. Mahoney's a player that Kelly Monte Hiller says doesn't get enough credit for her play. On that, she tries to create the turnover, but unfortunately just gets a little bit of a cross check into Lou Becker's ribs. And another free position opportunity. Still no free position shot in the game yet for Maryland. And a tough angle potentially here for Lou Becker. She'll give it a run. Deflected in front and the whistle before that second shot. Looks like Lou Becker is going to get a second opportunity. I think there was a push either in the back or sort of in her sphere on the circle, or in her sphere, excuse me. So now she's lined up center hash. Much better angle of attack here for the goal leader for the Terps. And she'll finish. Lou Becker ends the drought for the Terps. About 18 minutes between goals for Maryland. And the Terps exhale a little bit as they're back on the board at 7-5. Again, another offensive success started by Emily Sterling. First shot for Hannah Lubecker gets that, that push in the back, lands in the crease. Second one, offside hip, makes it 7-5, Northwestern leads. Well, Kelly Monte Hiller has been synonymous with the color purple for a good chunk of her life, but before that, she knows all about wearing Terps colors. Right there, set of your screen, sitting there in the back. Number three, alongside her teammate, number five. Monty Hiller and Kathy Reese played together for a couple of years. First two of that seven year in a row stretch of national titles under Cindy Timschel. The success of both of these coaches started here in College Park as players. They're both phenomenal on field. I've watched Kathy in practices mess around with a stick. I've seen a video of Kelly Monte Hiller doing the same before Maryland games here. They really just are incredible, were incredible players, are incredible coaches, and just have pushed this game to the next level, both on and off the field. Alongside a player that played for Kathy Reese, part of a couple of national title teams here at Maryland, Taylor Cummings, she played against Teams coached by Kelly Amonte Hiller. And again, when they weren't conference rivals, when they were conference rivals, again, these two have been the best in this sport in the last quarter century, and they meet once again. And Maryland, again, dominating on draws here, but trailing on the scoreboard because of a flurry of turnovers. Again, that last goal, again, first one and 17 plus minutes for the Terps. Again, Lou Becker had the last and then gets the most recent for Maryland and they're back on the attack again. Northwestern is back in their zone. So what Maryland needs to do here is attack that on-ball defender, get the zone shifting and find the, the backside with quick ball movement. Sent out high to Lou Becker. Quick restart off the whistle on the call against Northwestern. Partial deflection there for Sammy White. Under 30 left on the shot clock. Louise Clevenger, assist leader in the Big Ten, operating from behind. Still does not have a point in this one, does Clevenger. Thomas wheeling in. Pass in front, trying to find May. Looking to scoot back for it, but it's deep into the shot clock. Either way, would have been a shot clock violation on the Terps in Maryland control. Another solid defensive set if you're Northwestern. They're clogging the middle. They're getting on hands. You see Maryland having to second guess and take an extra second on all of their feeds, all of their passes, even just around the top of the 8 and 12. And that just is a testament to how strong their defense is playing right now. Western up two, 
Under 2.30 left to go before the break in this one versus two showdown. Speeding in is Bowler. Flip for Koikendall. Nice dodge in front. Waits and score. How about the shiftiness and then the patience of Aaron Koikendall to get the finish? 8 5 Northwestern. Aaron Koikendall, best known as a feeder, but she can dodge too. She's really, really balanced here. Nice little shimmy. Love that stutter step and then love that fake. Something that I think young players really need to watch when you watch Erin Quakendall. She has incredible stick work, had the ability there to fake two, three times and get it past Sterling very easily after those fakes. Goal and an assist now for Quakendall. Give her 25 goals now on the season. Again, has led this Northwestern team in assists the past three years, and again, this year, season high, four goals for her at Boston College and has had four more assists five times this year. And Northwestern, with its first goal in almost seven minutes, reestablishes a three-goal advantage. Draw time again. Ahern and Maddie Smith won by the Terps again. That's an excellent draw there from Shaylin Ahern. That's such a hard skill, being able to snag the ball out of the air one-handed while under immense pressure, not only from the center you're going against, but the two other opposing uh, defenders crashing in from the circle. Thomas trying to work out of that double team, throwing it inside the eight and thrown away again by the Terps. The turnovers are gonna be something that the Maryland staff has a big conversation with their offense about. They have to value the ball and take their time. I think they're either going too far into the shot clock without really attacking, or they're throwing the ball away too early. They just have to find the balance. A dozen turnovers on Maryland here in the opening two quarters. Four against the Wildcats, and now you see they could hold it to about the final 10 seconds if they desire. They don't shot attempt there. Sterling in control. Great job there from Megan Ball to funnel that Northwestern attacker down towards the crease, give her zero angle, and ultimately she falls into the crease. So Maryland gets one more opportunity here to put the ball in the back of the net, see if they can end this half on a little bit of a high. Coming near side, Maggie Weissman out there with this Offensive unit and the sophomore. Thomas surveys. Maddie Smith over, tracking her. Short time here on the clock and a whistle. Final 10 second stretch. Out high, do the Terps realize they've got to go? Edmondson just flips it behind, missed the net, and the horn sounds to signify we've reached halftime of this latest showdown between women's lacrosse elite programs. Northwestern here on the road, Aaron Koikendall and company getting it done. 8-5 the score for the top-ranked team in the land against number two, Maryland. And the Wildcats have won 11 of 12 outings when leading at halftime this year. And again, coming here on the roll, road and holding Maryland in check for a good chunk of this first half. Again, game was tied at four. And since then, Northwestern seizing control of the game, scoring four of the next five goals to have the three-goal edge at halftime. Northwestern eight, Maryland five. Step aside for the moment. Here, you're watching Women's Lacrosse on Big Ten Network. Well, coming up, the conference's best put it all on the line during the individual event finals of the 2024 Big Ten Men's Gymnastics Championships. That's next only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Kathy Reese joining us, Coach. 
Just one okay. goal in the last 21 plus minutes, 12 turnovers in the first half. I know that doesn't please you. What was your message to your team at halftime? Well, I think we just need to toughen up on the offensive end. You know, we, we started off really strong. We're dodging hard, moving the ball well. Um, and then in the second quarter, you know, we, we just kind of fell into, you know, their pressure a little bit too much. And so second half, we're going to step out more confident, move the ball, dodge harder, attack the cage harder um, with our head up and see what our options are. Your center, Shea Ahern, has done a fantastic job on the draw today. What are the things that you're really liking from that uh, draw circle team that you're seeing so far? You're right on. You know, Shay has done a fantastic job. She's competing in the middle. Her circle people are working well with her. Um, been a, a, obviously gets us possession, which is a huge part of this game right now. Um, and, you know, I, I, we just need to, we need to finish our plays on the offensive end. You know, so she's doing what she can to get it in our hands. And our offense really is ready to step up for the second half. Coach, thanks. Thanks, guys. Kathy Reese, again, that draw advantage normally is going to put you in a position to thrive, but the turnovers have negated all that great work from Ahern and company. As you can see, you're basically 50-50, right? Every For every draw, there's a turnover pretty much. So that's a great, great news if you're Maryland. You're owning that draw circle, an area that Northwestern has seen a ton of success in this year. Like Kathy Reese said, you just have to clean up the turnovers and value the ball that you're working so hard to get. Again, both of these teams, again, average about a 60% or so success rate in winning draws. Northwestern coming in leads the nation in getting the most, in part because they score so many, they get so many. But in this game, when they've gotten eight first half goals, limited to just three draw wins, Massive opportunity for Maryland if it can hang on to the ball and finish effectively. But if the Cats start winning more draws, getting more possessions, certainly going to favor Northwestern. Here's a look at Serafina DeMuno, another option on draws, the junior from Barrington, Illinois. She'll get a crack against Ahern to start off this third quarter. This is a change that Kelly Monte Hiller and her staff have made to try to shake things up with Shaylen Ahern. But so far, she's been able to kind of counteract that in this second half. And again, Ahern continuing to dominate in that category on draws. And let's see if the Terps can cash in here and kind of set a tone in the third quarter for their cause to keep that perfect string intact under Kathy Reese against conference foes. Terps have never lost a conference game in 18 seasons under Coach Reese at home, but quickly the giveaway and Northwestern in transition. Madison Smith there getting on the hands of Eloise Clevenger. They've done a really nice job of creating havoc with these, these Maryland attackers, and that trend has continued into this second half. So Northwestern, again, losing a draw, but getting quick possession and now going after it. Skeen fires over top of the net. The sun is still in Emily Sterling's eyes. Northwestern probably going to take full advantage of that while it lasts. Twist on the edge, back out for Sam Smith. Skeen. Firing through, bouncer and a score. Izzy Skane with another rocket off the turf. Her fourth goal of the game, and it's a four goal lead. Solid dodge there from Skane. A little face dodge again. The last couple drives, she's elected to go down the outside. Here she goes top center, goes over top. Nice low bouncer, low and away from Sterling. Four goal cushion right now for Northwestern. Largest lead of the game. And Izzy Skane, yeah. Celebration on for her. She's loving what's going on right now. I have no idea what that means, <laughs> but she's excited. <laughs> well, we know Izzy Skane can fire things up. Got the fist pumping in more ways than one for her unit and 99 goals last year coming back from missing two years ago with the injury issue and now back up to her old tricks again here in 2024 and the cats win a draw and now set it up in the attack zone solid draw win there from madison tail sorry madison smith 
She's had a really solid game thus far. On the defensive end, on the circle, she's done a really nice job. Skeen flips it that time. There's Taylor coming through and scores. And that's what makes Northwestern so challenging to defend. You're worried about Skeen 1v1, and she finds a cutter coming through. That's something that Coach Kelly Monte Hiller talked a lot about. She wants a balanced offense. They have multiple weapons, and there you're using Madison Taylor. Nice little cut. She's a lefty, so we, Maryland has to get on that left side of her, not coming from the right side. And again, low and away. Northwestern has found a ton of success shooting low on Sterling. Hat trick now from Madison Taylor. Give her. 47 goals now on the season, and Northwestern doubling up the Terps at this point. Ahern and Maddie Smith. Spun out, and big sister Sam able to collect that. A pair of Smith sisters from Mill Valley, California, combined there to win another possession for Northwestern. Again, Maddie Smith making an impact. Directs that ball to the circle. I've been really impressed with her play this game. Taylor, back out high. Koykendall thought about it, hangs on to it, and goes behind. Koykendall, flip for skiing. Trying to come inside on Hallis. Double coming from Lamoureux. Reset, reset, reset. Going to Monty with a touch. Taylor, Amonti trying to create some traffic. Tight angle shot and a score. Madison Taylor able to get that past Sterling with not a lot of room to operate, and it's 11-5. Madison Taylor kind of mimicking an Izzy Skane-esque play with that drive down this right alley, keeping it in her dominant left hand. Very, very strong take, brings it back to her left, and then just hugs it right in that little, little, little window on that pipe. And the defenders may be a little worried about the flip to Amante or the pick, and then they get caught in that one-on-one -on -one situation. Northwestern loves their exchanges. They love to operate from the elbows, slip picks, picks, flips. They're very creative, and they're comfortable working in tight spaces. And there you can see Madison Taylor taking full advantage. That's not a great angle to shoot from. That's not terrible defense from Maryland, but they're just so strong sort of in those low angle situations. Back-to-back -back goals for Taylor. Three unanswered goals for Northwestern since the third quarter started in a minute 38, and that's three goals on their last three shots against Emily Sterling, who was so good in preventing a larger margin for Northwestern in the opening half. Terps have it back, but now they're down by a half dozen. This is, this is where Maryland needs to take advantage of the offensive possessions they're getting off of the draw and take it one goal at a time. You're never gonna score a six point goal that don't, they don't exist, it doesn't happen. So it's about taking advantage of every opportunity and making the most out of them. Thomas from the dot adjacent to the eight, back out for Edmondson. Shannon Smith, dispossessed. Excellent work from Carly Mahoney. Carly Mahoney is a staple of this Northwestern defense. She's been around for a while. She really does an excellent job here of getting on hands and that nice little check. Actually, that was Jane Hansen who got that check. Nice ground ball there, but good pressure there from all of those Northwestern defenders. And again, that whole group, Gillespie, Halpern, Mahoney, Jane Hansen, so effective in this game today. And teaming up for the stop. Northwestern, though, losing it. How about the back check there from Dylan Amonte? And now a big-time collision. And that's going to be a card against Maddie Sterling. Runs off green card there for that foul in between the 30s. So it'll be a one-minute player-up opportunity for Northwestern. 
That was caused by a back check to Megan Ball. The Maryland staff is arguing that no one actually had possession when that foul was assessed. So I'm not sure whether they're thinking that should have been a green card. Regardless, it's a one minute green card for Northwestern player up. So now Cats looking to continue and advance this lead here on the player up opportunity. Ball work out in front. Boykendall looking to flip for Amani and thrown away. Just the seventh giveaway on the Wildcats in this game. If you're Maryland, you're breathing a sigh of relief, getting out of that without a shot on goal. They now need to take care of the ball as they clear it, run out this green card, and get a solid offensive possession. It feels like it's been a while since they've had a quality shot on cage. Ahern. And the Terps, with time winding down on that penalty, going to get the instruction that they can get down to business here in the attack. Back at even strength. Kate Seitz had a goal last week against Michigan, 34 in white and red for the Terps out there with this offensive unit. <laughs> the little poach away there after the whistle. And Edmondson gets it back. Gillespie just a little too eager there. Edmondson hadn't moved, she hadn't engaged. She just got a warning for that. Yeah, it's Carly Bahoni <laughs> jumping in there, trying to knock it away. That cat defense has been so aggressive generating turnovers, looking to continue the string. And now there, Eloise Clevenger lost it. Sites able to scoop it back up. But approaching just 20 seconds left in the shot clock. Ahern wheeling in and more strong D. Gillespie helped pry it out, but they're going to call a foul on Northwestern too. Shaylen Ahern doing a nice job dodging that first defender. You have to remember they're always behind you. They don't disappear, so she needs to protect her stick there. Did a nice job. Northwestern just a little bit too over eager on that back check. See, just 15 seconds left to shoot here for the Terps. Back out by the 12 meter fan for this restart for Ahern. Waiting to get everything situated. And Kelly Monte Hiller still questioning some stuff with the officials here as they try to make sure that the clock's right. I believe the shot clock's getting set to 20. Coach Kelly Monte Hiller arguing that, oh, they added five seconds on the game clock. That was the change. Yeah, so they put five there. You would expect them to put five on the shot clock potentially too. Let's see. I would think so. But Coach Monte Hiller is arguing that it should be lower, not 20, if that does in fact get changed. So now the officials still here at the side having a little conversation about what the number should be. And now a little lightheartedness for there for Ahern. As she kind of gets iced here in this spot. So here's a look at the play. It looks like the foul was called at 18-17. About 8.58 on the clock. They ended up putting 20 back on it. And the shot there from Edmondson denied. Not sure if La Liberty got a piece. Ends up here for Northwestern. Screaming downfield in transition. Sam Smith over for Madison Taylor. And now the Cats here with this advantage. Don't need to fast break it if they don't want to. 
and they'll start to work some clock. Maryland doing a nice job getting in the hole, preventing a transition goal. Northwestern being smart, being patient. They don't need to force anything right now. They have the opportunity to whittle this clock down and get a solid possession. And there the Cats score again. Emerson Bolig adds her name to the scoring column. 12-6 Northwestern. Emerson Bolig, great little take going over top. Some of these players on Northwestern's offense prefer the alleys, others prefer the going over the top. But here, great clear, pushing transition, so fast, so athletic. This is why Northwestern is number one in the country. And again, another little take. Nothing fancy, just sees that lane. And again, great shot placement, low and away, Northwestern leads. This game at one point was tied at four apiece. The action still continues, and we've got more of it coming up tomorrow. Men's lacrosse when the Scarlet Knights face the Wolverines. Live coverage begins 7 Eastern only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. How about our State Farm State of Success and look at the defensive numbers for Kelly Montia Hiller and company. They've had a great End of second quarter through this third quarter so far. This game was once tied at 4-4, and since then it's been all Northwestern. Eight of the last nine goals have gone in favor of Northwestern. Cats have got four goals on five shots this quarter. And again, that drought approaching half hour of game time here for Maryland. Foul on the edge. That's gonna be another green card for Northwestern. These draws have been a battle. Players are going hard, there's checks, there's people crashing in from the 30s. Everyone's doing an incredible job, and it's a reason why this is one of my favorite parts of the game. If you looked at the scoreboard and saw Northwestern, considering what the Cats normally do on the draw, you would figure they're dominating draws as well. It's not the case. 14-5 Maryland but 15 turnovers against the Terps have just put a dent in any effort for Maryland to get any rhythm. It's so tough because their players on the circle, Shaylin Ahern in the center, have done their jobs. They've done their jobs. They're creating opportunities for Maryland, but on the offensive end, unfortunately, it's just been turnover city with so many kind of unforced ones. And now La Liberty lifting her game. That's her second big save here in the quarter. Northwestern going to try to escort it down the field. And Sammy White and company been perfect in the clear game till now. Their first failed clear on their 17th attempt. Lubecker trying to get it, looking to scoop. Check from behind. How about that? Madison Taylor screaming all the way down to knock it free. I love that play for Madison Taylor. What an effort. She's an attacker, charging all the way down to that defensive end, creating an opportunity for her team to get the ball back and limiting a transition opportunity for Maryland. Going so hard, sprinting after that back check was excellent. Great, great effort from Madison Taylor. So there's some question here about whether Northwestern got a timeout, and let's see. I believe the refs are saying that Northwestern called a timeout when La Liberty didn't have possession. If that's the case, if that did happen where they didn't have possession, that's a turnover and it's Maryland ball, I believe. So that's the discussion we believe that they're having on the field right now. And Kelly Montz-Hiller, from our vantage point, we could hear her before saying, hey, our goalie had the ball. I think there's a lot of confused people right now. Kelly Monte, the refs, us. 
hard to tell from their conversation between the refs on the field right now how this is going to go. Well, it doesn't damper the effort there from Taylor to come all the way back and smack it free. No, that was an incredible individual effort. And again, she's an attacker. She's a low attacker. So she worked so hard to go get that ball back and rode. And her team. And credit to her teammates for having her back and not going off sides. Great effort, great back check, kept it loose. I believe right around now is where Kelly Monte Hiller called that timeout. So if that's the case, that should be Northwestern ball. So as Taylor gets ready to regroup, they're giving an explanation now to the Northwestern bench. And it doesn't seem to be one that they are, are big fans of. This we know. 6.47 left to go here in the quarter. Cats here with this seven goal advantage. Now there's confusion about if they, North, were, if they released early from their green card. So now they've had an illegal substitution call here on Northwestern. And they've added time back to the clock. So by adding time back to the clock, Number 19, Samantha Smith, her green card wasn't supposed to release till 6.50. So somehow they released early after or before their card was supposed to be up. Now they're two players down. So it appears it has nothing to do with the timeout. <laughs> gotcha. So let's go back and see how Maryland can utilize this to its favor. If ever a team's looking for a spark, it's the Terps right now, again, with just one goal since the opening quarter. And Lubecker trying to take advantage of that two-player advantage of the shot wide. So one player, Sam Smith, now back on, still a player up here from Maryland for about 45 seconds. Maryland needs to take advantage of this. Very controversial. Body save there by La Liberty to deny Lubeck. La Liberty has stepped up in the second half, done a really nice job just making the saves she should be making and really just kind of being that solid force behind a very, very talented Northwestern defense. Now there's a turn timeout for Northwestern. They'll call it here with 6.06 left to go in the third quarter. And the Wildcats again looking to get another good possession and potentially add to this lead. And again, a wild scenario here with Northwestern, despite getting dominated on draws, crunching Maryland where it counts the most on the scoreboard. We mentioned the run in this history, Maryland with nine straight during part of your time, Taylor, against the Wildcats. And since then, the script has been flipped with the Wildcats winning six of the last eight. Yeah, you would look at this and with Maryland leading 19-12, you'd think it would be back and forth year after year, but they've kind of gone through stretches where Maryland has dominated, then Northwestern has dominated. Northwestern has been on the rise for the last couple of seasons winning the national championship last year. They've had a ton of success, and Maryland's been knocking at the door, getting closer. Some games have been closer scores, some have been larger, but we're seeing right now Northwestern start to pull away and potentially add to their run. Saw that win for Northwestern here at College Park. The last one, February of 2006. So you're looking at almost 20 years. Kristen Gelman, two-time Twarton Award winner for the Wildcats during their heady run there of five in a row in national titles. 
integral part of that squad. And Kathy Reese never lost a conference home game, home game in her 18 seasons at the helm, won 95% of her home games overall. But right now, going to need a serious rally to keep that stat alive. And not only have the turnovers piled up, but the shooting has dipped for Five, Maryland. They started four, out four three, goals on four two, shots. Since five, then, they've only hit one of their last eight shot attempts. Well, and, and just looking at the scoreboard right now, Maryland only has one more shot than Northwestern has goals. So not only are they not generating enough shots, but they aren't going in the back of the net for the Terps. Back at full strength. Northwestern going and scored. Another dazzling move from Madison Taylor. Madison Taylor is a very tricky player to guard because she can go underneath and take the, under, uh, take the alley dodge or she can go over top and go through the middle. There she elects to go over top. And what Madison Taylor does really well, she just keeps her feet moving. She understands that there's pressure coming from her left-hand side, tucks her stick a little bit, and again, puts it to that low right corner. I've been very impressed with her shot selection tonight. Four goals in the NCAA final last year for the sophomore from Wonton, New York, and now a five spot tonight in the gold category, 49 on the season, 13-5 Northwestern. Again, a stunning turn of events after this game was flip-flopping back and forth for a really engaging first 10 or 12 minutes. And since then, all cats. Northwestern doing a better job on the draw as of late. They're riding really hard. Their defense, I think this 13 to five score is credit to their defense. They've done a really nice job just creating chaos all over the field for Maryland. And now, Cats can be as patient as they want to be offensively with this lead. And not surprising to see Northwestern in front. It is surprising to see them up eight. And potentially by more diving shot in the score, Sam Smith. That was gorgeous. And it's 14-5. Another prime example of Northwestern just being really comfortable in tight spaces. Their little face dodge goes down, sort of that outside fan. Good defense there from Maryland Sophie Hallis, but an even better shot under pressure. Another bouncer goes. They've had a ton of success with that tonight. So Sam Smith, again, does so much of the dirty work, draw control wise, gets her ninth goal of the year, or make it her 10th. She had the first one to start off tonight, so a two goal game for her. And Kelly Amante Hiller and Northwestern are on the verge of going running clock here in a one two showdown at Maryland. I mean, if they can make that happen, that's just huge for them at this point in the season. They've played incredibly well. Maryland has hurt themselves in a lot of instances, but taking nothing away from Northwestern, they've done an incredible job today. Again, if you go up by 10 on your foe, it's the lacrosse version of the mercy rule where it goes running clock until you cut it down below double digits. And Northwestern has the chance to do that here in a one versus two showdown. But the Terps, you know, pride here matters as much as trying to come back in this thing too. They get a takeaway or a near one. Hallis over on the edge trying to get it, but didn't quite have it out of bounds. Northwestern ball. This game is just going back and forth off the turf. Players are going hard. Lots of contact on this ground ball there. Didn't look like a trip or anything. It's just two players going hard and unfortunately got a little bit caught up there for Sophie Hallis. Yeah, going out of bounds with possession. So Northwestern has it back. And again, if you told me six minutes in that this was going to be potentially a mercy rule game, I don't think anybody would have believed the way these two were trading blows to start. But the Cats have neutralized Maryland. The Terps have been mistake prone. 
And Northwestern able to finish effectively at the other end. Now a turnover. And Maryland screaming back down the field. Another hard spill for Hallis. And man, that one might take a minute to get up from. That hurts. That This turf is tough. It's AstroTurf. It's wet, but it's still a hard surface. That's her second hard fall in a minute or two. So I'm sure she's going to be down for a little bit. Just a really hard blow there. Yeah, she was definitely kind of came up a little soft after taking that hard fall the last time. And now another one sprawled out on the turf there. For Sophie Hallis, who has landed all out, junior out of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, transfer from Colorado. And getting some assistance from the athletic training staff. Little bit of a limp there. Hoping it's just like a hard fall, a little knot, Charlie horse maybe. Nothing serious, nothing with ligaments or anything. And Kathy Reese already without Victoria Hench, not in the lineup tonight. And now Hallis, another vital two-way player for this group. Certainly going to get checked out on the sideline. Still, again, walking with some assistance out of play. So the Terps have it back. Trying to find some goals here late in the third to give them some life for the fourth. Edmondson up top. Second leading goal getter on this team. With one tonight, Lou Becker's got two of the five for the Terps, has it right now. In front, quick stick, chance for Libby May, and that's good. Sweet feed from Chrissy Thomas and the Terps with their first goal here of the second half. That's the ball movement that Maryland needs. They're changing the point of attack. They went from top center to behind cage at X, back to the middle off of a cut. By changing the point of attack offensively, you're causing the defense to have to shift. And when there's a backer, it automatically means somebody's open. So the more you can get the defense to rotate, the clearer those open cutters in the middle are going to be. So May with her second tally of the game. And third best goal getter for this Terps group. Showing off her killer finishing efforts. And the first goal is the 428 mark of the second quarter. And that drought, about 16 and a half minutes for the Terps. And a big draw win earned by the Wildcats, Madison Taylor. You can scoop it up and set it up for Northwestern. Relentless play there from Taylor. Megan Ball looked like she had that off the turf, but Taylor just kept chipping away, kept it loose. I've been really impressed with her play tonight. Sam Smith draws the double back out for Taylor. Rips the shot wider than that. Aiden Peduzzi there out defensively trying to track down Taylor. Labaro. Trying to defend Skane, Izzy. Tough angle, no problem, but they'll call the violation in the crease. That would be the only thing I can think of. It wasn't a dangerous follow through. There wasn't a yellow card. So I'm assuming it was a crease violation there. And we're gonna get a yellow card on Madison Taylor for a cross check. And that foul against Megan Ball of Maryland. Let's take another look at Izzy Skane. Yep, just right at the end there, even after the goal went in, she stepped in the crease. You're not allowed to do that. That's why that goal got taken back, unfortunately, for Northwestern. And finishing through that right foot coming down in the crease. But again, that's good defense from Mary. Forcing her in that fan. Just a great shot from Skane. Western putting pressure 
on the Terps again. Call here right at the restraining line, and it's going to be a card here on Megan Ball of Maryland. Set in the opener, Megan Ball loves to check. There just got a little too aggressive, a little too close to the head of Aaron Quakendall. Now Maryland and Northwestern are even 6v6 for the next few minutes. So trading cards. And Maryland can't trade goals with Northwestern. The deficit too big. Need to prevent here. And all even, we'll see what Northwestern opts to do here in this scenario. Defense, cause turnover. Control for Maddie Sterling. Maryland showing Northwestern a little bit of their own medicine there, getting on hands, creating a turnover. That was really nicely done. Peduzzi flings it across for Lamoureux. And she'll scoot up field and get it into the attack end here for the Terps. 40 seconds left in this in this third quarter. I'm expecting Maryland to try to take the last shot and play this out 6v6. May, straight away. Lou Becker, about 20 seconds left to go. Wheels inside, shoots, wide of the net. Maryland trying to chat about how much time's left as they get ready to roll in the restart. And Thomas again. Call coming on Maddie Smith of Northwestern. Short time here for the Terps. See the angle there from the hash. Lou Becker is looming there. The feed instead to Eloise Clevenger. Taken away. Sammy White with another intercept for this Northwestern D, which has been tremendous here tonight in neutralizing Maryland. 18 turnovers on the Terps. Kelly Amante, Hiller and company are a quarter away from defending the number one ranking and getting an extremely rare road win here at Maryland. Here on this Saturday in April in College Park, look at the skies here with the sun fading and potentially the hopes here of a Maryland comeback. One quarter left to go and the Terps in an unthinkable eight goal hole at home, place where under Kathy Reese, they've never lost a conference home game and have only lost about 5% of their home games under her tutelage in 18 years. But Northwest Western has been balanced all the way around with the exception of the draw circle where they've been dominated, but they've gotten it done when needed. With them, with them having trouble in the draw circle, both ends of the field have had to step up and they've done exceptionally well. This defense in particular has been smothering, especially on Maryland's smaller field. It's one of the smaller regulation size fields in Division I, and they've just made their presence known across the entire entirety of it. Six cause turnovers for the Wildcats among the 18 giveaways from Maryland in the game. And Northwestern, which averages close to 18 goals per game, on track for that number, maybe more. And the Terps, again, strong shooting start, but have been done in by the turnovers. Five, and four, the inability to get and generate enough shot opportunities in this game. Another draw win, 15-8 now advantage in the game on draws for the Terps. But still this massive deficit entering the final 15-minute stretch. Maryland's goal for this last quarter, chip away. Just continue to get 
possession off the draw and then aim to get quality possessions and quality looks on Love Liberty. I don't think they've challenged her a lot tonight, in part because they just haven't been able to get a ton of shots off. And Love Liberty, three of her five saves coming in the third quarter. And again, Northwestern, which was up by three at the break, adds to that with an explosion in the third quarter to build the margin out. Called away from the ball. And Louise Clevenger gonna come out from behind and have this opportunity on the eight meter line. Clevenger is one of their top offensive threats. I expect her to shoot this, just given who she is and also the score. Able to put it home, goes top corner over La Liberty, and Maryland with a much needed finish here to open the floor. Eloise Clevenger, a player who's best known for her feeding capabilities, here showing off her shooting prowess. That's a really nicely placed shot. Top left corner, La Liberty's a lefty goalie, so that side is open. Protects her stick, tucks it in really nicely. A much needed goal for Clevenger and the Terps. Her first of the night, and again, the assist leader in the Big Ten, second in the nation that category, had been pointless till that juncture and had three goals and an assist against Michigan. And again, when she's got more goals than assists, that means she's looking more in the dodge game than the assist game. But nonetheless, Maryland will take it. Definitely. I like when Maryland utilizes her as a dodger. She's very comfortable behind Crease. She loves to feed. But when they bring her up top, it just adds a different, different dimension. And she can really put the ball in the back of the net wherever she wants it. First time Maryland scored back-to-back -back goals in this game since the first quarter. Both teams have had to rely more on the dodge game tonight. Each team with just two assists on their goals. Two on seven for Maryland and just two on 14 for the Wildcats. Northwestern has definitely been dodge heavy against Maryland's man-to-man -man defense. They're creating a lot of isolations, which allows for players like Skein and Taylor and Quakendall to have a ton of room to dodge and find success. There's Skane, gonna get back, serves behind Koykendall, now in a mood to feed, but intercepted. Good work there by Aiden Paduzzi on the intercept, and leaves it off for Sterling. Great interception there from Emily Sterling. Again, she's had a great game. And now for Maryland, I think at this point, chip away, Try to do what you can to close this gap, but it's really about putting together a solid fourth quarter that you can learn from and grow from. Edmund C circles out in front. Foul coming here on Northwestern. And a Gillespie among those in the neighborhood for the contact. And if it's Edmondson on the eight meter line, look out. She's got a rocket shot. Question is, and she keep it on frame. And that one takes a wild carom out. Sites trying to win it near the restraining line and can't hang on. That's a tricky ground ball to pick up between the, the spin off the pipe and the spin off the field. But that's one that Kate Sites is going to want to have back, especially not under a lot of pressure. More good work for Sammy White in the clear game for Northwestern. The Cats have been nearly flawless in that category. 18 of 19 on clears. So again, Maryland, good chance. Edmondson denied. And back at it are the Cats. Well, Cumberland, first year, been getting some time throughout the year for Kelly Monty, Hiller and company. Again, with this advantage, Western able to rotate in some of those younger players and get some experience here in this big time scenario. Sterling stoning Izzy Skane. First save of the second half for the Maryland keeper. 10 now on the night. Izzy Skane electing to go underneath once again. Good read there from Sterling, doing a really nice job. Kind of holding that pipe, reading where Skane is shooting. Lamoureux fouled 
as she worked it up the field on the court. Again, loves, Izzy Skane loves that pull under. That's the first high shot I've seen Skane shoot. Not the best placed with a righty goalie as talented as Sterling. Skane, four goals on 10 shots tonight. Madison Taylor, five goals on 10 shots. And they've got nine of the 14 combined for the Wildcats. Maryland's got the only goal here in the fourth. The time of wasting, just about a minute, 11 minutes left to go and still doubled up here by the visitors. Edmondson flipped back for Maisie Clevenger. Sites trying to spin in under 30 left in the shot clock. Thomas flicked in front, backhanded shot. Absolutely spectacular from Eloise Clevenger. You could hear Coach Kathy Reese yelling, Eloise top, Eloise top. They want to pull her up high, and for that reason alone. Cheeky little shot, BTB. You're down by seven. That is takes a ton of guts, a ton of poise, and who else to put that in the back of the net but Eloise Clevenger. Love that dodge there from Chrissy Thomas. She engages that backer. That is the perfect shot in that moment. The defender crashing on Eloise Clevenger is on her stick side, that right shoulder, so she just brings it behind her back. Nice little flick against her righty, or lefty goalie, excuse me. That spot was wide open. Just pretty, pretty, pretty. Spot on there for the senior from Woodstock, Maryland, and a big smile for that. You love when you pull that thing off. It just feels good, and especially in a moment like this, right, where you're down by seven, now you're down by six. That can help lift your team up. It can be sort of that juice goal that maybe Maryland can build on in this last 10 minutes. Yeah, it's only one, but it feels energy of the Maryland bench up even a little bit more. Three unanswered goals in the last seven minutes and 21 seconds for Maryland. But again, that's only cut the deficit to six. Again, Northwestern was on the verge of mercy ruling Maryland here and going up by 10 goals to get the running clock. And the Terps have done great work to close the gap, but time wasting under 10 minutes left to go. That's the danger of getting in a hole like this to Northwestern is they're just so good. And here we're going to see it again. Another thing that is so good that BTV is pretty beautiful. At the other end, opportunity here on the free position. And look at that, the calmness of Madison Taylor, so skilled on free position shots, does it again. And all that momentum for Maryland deflated as Northwestern's found the back of the net. Madison Taylor's only a sophomore, but she doesn't play like it. She plays like a player who's been around for three or four years. She is a player that Coach Amante Hiller said has matured a ton in her sophomore campaign. She's learned a lot from players like Izzy Skane and Erin Quickendall, and she is sort of that third head on the three-headed monster that is Northwestern's offensive. And how about a sixth goal tonight? 50 now in the season for Madison Taylor, and again, finishing on Free position attempts, been among the nation's leaders in free position goals this year. And again, takes a little starch out of this Maryland comeback. Draw win for Ahern again, who's been massive. Nine draw control wins for Shea Ahern in this game. And that's just to herself. She's also done a great job of directing it to Maryland's circle. So Shaylin Ahern has been a very bright spot for Maryland where if you're looking you know, ahead, these two teams could face each other in the Big Ten tournament and NCAAs. That's something positive that Maryland can build on. It's something positive that Shailen Ahern can build on, regardless of the outcome of this game. And it feels like there might be another meetup for these two coming up. You know, met twice last year, including in the Big Ten tournament, when the Cats were able to take down the Terps for the second time. Shot in front, and that one wide. Liberty tracking it. 
Louise Clevenger picking it up. Out top, out top for Lubecker. Good passing in front. That one off the bar. The Liberty getting back up. Another save there for the Northwestern keeper. She has ramped up her game here second half. Definitely. She had an iffy start of the first quarter, but since then has played really solid. That was, what, two or three shots, either off a of pipe or off of La Liberty in quick succession. The second one was definitely her. That first one cracked off the bar. Either way, the six-year performer for Northwestern for Newburyport, Massachusetts, coming up huge. Back out high for Lubeck. Rips it well wide on the backup. Terps will keep it. Final 20 seconds of the shot clock. Going in front. Another one scooped up by a Maryland performer. About 10 left to shoot. Tough angle. The Liberty at the ready comes up with her seventh save of the night. Taking a look here at La Liberty saves. That one off the pipe. Nice little quick stick in there by Shannon Smith. Another one came. That was a great save. Hugged her pipe really well. You can see she's fired up. And now the Cats screaming back. Bowling. Contact. Lost it. Here's Maddie Sterling with it. Back out for big sister Emily. And now Megan Ball trying to break out of the pile with it. Outlet for Lamoureux and up to May. Under seven left to go. Terps trail by seven. So Maryland's got to start to escalate here and go a little bit earlier in the shot clock to try to come back and now no attempt. What a check there for Kendall Halpern to take it away. 20th turnover of the game for the Terps, although they do get it right back. Good pick up there off the ground from Shaylin Ahern, but we're just sort of trading turnovers back and forth here. And Northwestern content to trade anything right now, again, with this sizable advantage if things are neutral the rest of the way. And six minutes left to go. Northwestern in control. I expect Northwestern to take, you know, 30 seconds off the clock or so. They're completely in control right now in terms of the score, but also with regards to the time remaining. And again, Kelly Monte Hiller and her group back on top of the lacrosse landscape last year with that first national title since 2012 and this group continuing to advance the lead who else Izzy Skeen gets her fifth of the game and Northwestern on its way to a signature road win of the season again Molly Liberty doing it at one end and the Cats relying on their top threats to finish at the other end. Izzy's game with the latest and the Cats in control. As we come to a close in this one versus two showdown in College Park, men's gymnastics championship heating up. See, look at the action there on the mats. We'll get you out there to that coming up momentarily. Michigan taking part right now on the horse. And we'll see how that transpires with a look at the men's gymnastics championship coming up from Champaign, Illinois in just a bit, right here in College Park. Number one is taking care of business against number two with Northwestern in control of Maryland. Don't forget, you can check that out right now on the Fox Sports app as well with gymnastics ahead. Meantime, here on the field, Jason App, Taylor Cummings, in Maryland continuing its run of dominance in draws. They have doubled up 
the Wildcats in that category. Problem is, Northwestern has doubled up Northwestern where it counts the most in the goal category. Definitely didn't expect this spread after such a tight first quarter, but Northwestern has taken care of the little things incredibly well tonight. Outside of the draw, they've pretty much dominated every other statistical category. Again, one goal game and lead for Northwestern after one, up three at halftime, up eight after three. And Maryland, again, with a nice little surge with a three goal in a row stretch, tail end of the third, end of the fourth, but just the deficit dug way too great. It's really hard to come back from any team when you're down by eight, but especially number one team in the country, Northwestern, it's almost impossible to climb that big of a hole, especially so late in the game. Again, those are turnover numbers that won't throw either coach, but especially Maryland here. Again, Maryland has almost as many turnovers as the Terps do shots in the game. 22 turnovers and just 24 shots and only eight goals. And again, player down. You can see Taylor and summoning training staff for Dylan Amonti. I'm hearing the girls yell she's cramping, so at least it doesn't seem to be a major injury. It just seems to be more of a cramp. Again, you can see her just kind of start to slow up and go down and grab after her right leg. So athletic training staff and Kelly Monty Hiller going to come on out and look at her player and niece. It's a cool family connection there. I, I think it would be awesome to play for, you know, your aunt or your mom. Oh, let me check that. I thought it was uh, Amont I thought uh, yeah. it was, uh, Dylan Amonte. Again, the nines and the zeros in this font are a little funky. That is Sam Smith. Either way, Coach is going to be out there for one of her players and giving her a little assistance. Definitely. She looks to be smiling, though. It sounds like she just got a really bad cramp, and those, those hurt. And apologies for the missed number. Good to see Sam is up and starting to walk that thing off. So everybody getting set. Four and change. We're under that now, left to go here. And Northwestern positioning itself to work some clock and get another good look or two here. Tail end of this quarter. About 25 seconds left. They're still in this elbow-focused offense. Lots of picks, lots of slips. Expect them to stay at it. And Megan Ball doing what she does. Non-stop aggression. Able to get another cause turnover. Second for her in the game with a couple of ground balls. Maryland looking to push it upfield. Skeen trying to create some havoc, but challenging again between the 30s to not draw contact in a card and give the opposition that one minute player up advantage on the green card. Last year, you would have seen Skeen hustle and ride and be on hands that entire entirety until the opposing 30. And with this new green card rule, it just kind of takes the ride out of the game a little bit. And she doesn't want to risk it and put her team a player down. Yeah, a lot more aggression inside the restraining line than outside this year. And the Terps, again, another theme, another turnover in the giveaway. Certainly work for Kathy Reese and company to pick up on. Northwestern gives it right back. There's just been a ton of turnovers. I think there's around 40, give or take, in this game. Neither coach is going to be pleased with that. Ultimately, for teams of this caliber, your goal is to have under 10 for the entire game. Pretty sure Maryland hit 10 in the first quarter, if I remember correctly. So that's just something where both teams are going to look back at this film and really want some of those silly, silly turnovers back. And again, in a year where everybody feels like has a chance to beat everybody else mm -hmm. in women's lacrosse with all of the results and 
You've got the top two teams in the rankings this week in Northwestern and Maryland already with multiple losses like a lot of other teams. You look at what the Wildcats have done, this potentially would be their seventh ranked win of the season. And you look at the places they've won at on the road, at Boston College, again, at North Carolina, and now potentially at Maryland for Northwestern. Not only are they battle tested just in their schedule, but getting a couple of big wins under your belt on the road really helps you for tournament time, particularly for a team like Northwestern who has their sights set on Final Four. Chrissy Thomas with a nice effort there, free position wise to score it for the Terps. They're only gonna change the final numbers in the scoreboard here this late in the go. It's a little too late for the Terps right now, but some positives. They've done well in their free position shooting tonight. Chrissy Thomas getting a little confidence, great step off that line. Good placement. Again, if you're Maryland, you're looking to take some positives out of this game. This is likely a team you're going to see again. So it's what did we do well? What do we need to improve on? And kind of going back to work. Yeah, certainly work to come for Maryland. Don't forget men's gymnastics championship. You can check out the action right now on the Fox Sports app. We'll have it for you coming up here right when we're through on the Big Ten Network. All of the goings on there at Illinois. Here in College Park, one versus two showdown that man for 15 minutes looked like it might be an all-time classic with the end-to-end -end action and activity between these two teams. And then Northwestern just started to assert itself. Maryland flurry of turnovers and Northwestern able to cash in and get ready to run some clock here in the final minute plus and celebrate an 11th win on the year and solidify its grasp of the number one ranking in the country. Definitely. There's been a lot of turnover at number one this year. I think four or five teams have hit number one in the various polls. I think this win solidifies them for this week, for sure. And it also leads to some big time traffic in the Big Ten Conference standings. Again, it'll be Maryland's first loss, so they'll be at 3-1, Michigan at 3-1, Northwestern at 3-1. Johns Hopkins, again, with a rally in overtime to overcome a deficit against Rutgers, so the Blue Jays in the mix. And again, for Maryland, going to be a big midweek showdown at Hopkins coming up on Wednesday. The rest of Maryland's schedule is all ranked teams because they're, it's only Big Ten opponents and Princeton. So they're going to be tested not just tonight, but moving forward. Izzy Skane doesn't want to let Madison Taylor get out of this game with the goal lead. They each have a half dozen now for Northwestern. Those two players tonight have just been unstoppable. Again, Skane showing the versatility of her game. That's off of a cut. She had that ball in her cross for maybe a half second. Great placement under pressure. And it's not like Kennedy Major from Maryland was far off of her. That's good defense. Just an even better shot. And Skane, Taylor, and the rest of the Wildcats here with a complete performance. And Kelly Monte Hiller won't be happy about the draw controls, but everything else seemingly near perfect for this group. And you look at Skeen and Taylor combined have more than Maryland as a team. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, Skeen and Taylor have put on an offensive show tonight. They've done really well. And those are two players that if Maryland faces Northwestern again, they're gonna have to figure out how to limit. And for the first time in Kathy Reese's reign here at Maryland, 18 years, the Terps have lost a home game to a conference foe. Northwestern does it in impressive fashion. 17-9 here against Maryland, winning the one versus two showdown. For Taylor Cummings and our entire crew, this is Jason Abb saying, thanks for watching this one of the Big Ten Network. Let's get you to the Men's Gymnastics Championship in Champaign.